All right, so I thought I would share a video today that is speaking from another angle. So here on the YouTube channel, nothing that I say is perfect. There is no perfection in, in any words that I'm saying. Nothing is really true. If I wanted to share this, I would have to stay silent. Words are already in duality. Words are already in language. Language is dual. So um, what I wanted to share today is that, again, there is a path and there is no path at the same time. So first of all, I have read a comment that said that I am talking about solipsism. Of course, I'm not talking about that because solipsism would be the idea that I am the only one here. I am one, I am a person here and that the whole world is a projection of my own mind, myself, my own self, myself alone. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that there is infinite consciousness and that this infinite consciousness is looking at itself through each and every one of us, that we are the same consciousness. I'm not saying that this person here is alone in the whole world and the whole world appear in herself. I'm saying that each and every body mind is that, is that consciousness believing to be a person in the world. But the person and the world appear in consciousness. And you can verify that by your, your direct experience. Is the person that you think you are, if you don't identify with the body and you, uh, you look at the thought, me and the thought, the world, both appear on the same plane of thoughts. So that is what is said. Not that I am someone here and that the whole world is in my own small mind myself. I'm saying that there is no me, that all of us are the infinite being. Of course, this will sound completely, totally insane. If you have not realized your nature, this is completely ununderstandable. It cannot, cannot be conceived. It cannot, it's, it's as if... I'm going to try to explain this. When the link, I don't know if it's in the brain, this, I heard about the default mode network, where it's a network in the brain that creates the sense of me. When that link breaks suddenly, and cannot be reconfigured. You can't conceive that you ever, you, can, you cannot believe a thought. You cannot own a thought. You can't, you can't feel that me is real. Well, these things happen. I don't know why. Is it biological? Is it in the brain? And the part of the brain that still function is task oriented, taking a microphone, using a computer. So what is said is that these things happen. Then even that may be traumatic for someone to just, I can't find the me. I cannot really believe that, <laughs> that this me exists. All I see now is there is awareness and the thoughts are coming and going in it. And that everything that I look at, if I don't project them to be something by believing a thought, they are unnameable, they, they are undescribable, they are the infinite appearing to be finite. There's also even the sense of I am always here while the body is moving in the world. There is a just a knowing of stillness, I'm not moving. I'm always here, no matter where the body is. 
and these these things are happening and there's even like a feeling of even a stigma around that i mean how can i should i pretend now that i that i believe a thought should i really start to pretend that i'm suffering because if i'm free of suffering shall i pretend i'm not saying that it's possible to be free of suffering to hurt anyone I'm, I'm saying that it is possible and also saying it is possible that you've lost the sense of me and you feel at a loss with that and those things are happening too. So if that can provide an anchor to those who are losing this belief in me or those who are looking to stop suffering, then take what you need and discard the rest. I have nothing, 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 nothing. To prove, because I know nothing. I cannot believe any belief. It's an, it's it's living without belief, really. And if you are looking for that question, I'll believe. What is a belief? Why should I believe this? And one other thing I wanted to say is I don't have a special karma. I'm an ordinary person. Very ordinary person. There was realization of awareness that was quite simple. It was the realization of awareness is our true nature is very, very simple. There is a realization that there is awareness of being aware. There is, it's not that I am a person that is aware of thoughts, is that the realization is that the person is a thought appearing in awareness. And that can be verified in your direct experience very, very simply. And once that is realized, that's a game changer because now you start to feel stable. You start to feel that there is something in your experience that is never changing, is not broken, doesn't need to be healed, is not going anywhere. It's always there. It's always been there. It's always going to be there. And that is not personal. And when the foundation of your human experience is that impersonal awareness, then immense growth is possible for the personality, the character to live its destiny to live, to fully live the human experience, to participate, to stop hiding by fear of being seen, by fear of not being good enough, because all of those beliefs are seen to be only belief. The belief in separation is a belief. And if you want to live that which you are, you start to be what you are when difficult emotions are coming and going in yourself. And when I read comment about I am a special person and that is only meant for special people, I totally disagree because I did sit with a lot of psychological pain to arrive at a place of non-resistance. And non-resistance is the absence of the seeking energy for anything to be different. And that is joy of being. The absence of the seeking energy is what you are looking for. And for that to exist, to be a reality, you may have to stop seeking feeling better. And if you are attending satsang, and if you are doing meditation to try to feel better, this will have to be let go too. If you want to reclaim your own sovereign being, the power of being. To reclaim your power, you must stop outsourcing it to gurus, teacher, and people that are speaking. You can listen to what is said, but bring it into your experience. Feel it. Try it. See what it does. Be the detective of your experience. That's the most, that's what is offered here for you to, to start to try this in your experience. I can give you an example. When I started to realize awareness, presence, 
is our nature, is not changing. I remember having one of the first time that I allowed myself to feel anger without projecting it outside and without suppressing it. I was on the phone with my partner and he was very, very, very angry for a small mistake that I made. He was over angry, like it was out of proportion. And I chose to say nothing. And I chose to feel in my body all the anger that I wanted to defend myself and project this anger at him. And I chose to stay with it. At some point during the phone call, I said, okay, now I feel that is enough. I tried to, to be nice a little bit. It was not working. And I, I didn't want to sue them. I just wanted to be firm and really normal. And I said, okay, now I see that that's enough. I'm going to hang up now. And he hang up before I could hang up. And I stayed with the pain. And then what, would, what came up to the surface was that fear, that sadness of abandonment. And I felt it fully. And I didn't pick up the phone to call a friend to complain about him. I stayed with the pain. I took a long walk. I cried a lot. I met that pain of fear of being hurt. And I realized that when I was in the past projecting anger, I was protecting myself to not feel this. And as I was able to feel this, I was able to stay in the eye of the storm, present, unmoving while the storm passed. It was really, really painful. And the next time this happened, I did the same thing and it was less painful. And the third time I did the same thing and it was much, much less painful. And by the fourth time, it was done. Over. No fear of anger. Just, I. it was like a little wind just passed by. And I was like, okay, nothing else. All right. And I have no fear of anger in myself. No fear of meeting anger in myself, meeting anger in others. And that is freedom. And I don't encounter many angry people and I I don't feel much anger and if I have to feel it if something arises in my experience I will feel it I'm totally open to feeling that is the doorway to truth so if those personal example are bringing something in your experience that you can really take to free yourself from enslavement to the mind. Take it. It's offered freely. I'm not here to prove anything. And there is no end point. The end point is the seeker, is the mind. The mind is looking for an end point. When will I be happy forever and ever? That's just a thought that is coming and going. That too is in the movie of later something will come. There is no later. There is no future. The future never comes. That you can verify in your experience as well. When do you exist in the future? And did you do you ever exist yesterday? Or is existence only here now? Staying close to what's real. So these are offered freely for you to make use of. And if you want to work with me for revealing what's in the way of your freedom, you are free to book session. But I'm, I'm not here to preach anything. So take what you need, discard what you don't need, what does not resonate, what does not make sense. It's totally fine. And if you are happy in your life, I mean, continue to be happy. It's, it's, that's the end point anyway. That's the fruit of being with what is. If you are already 
just at peace and happy. Enjoy that you are already living from your infinite nature. There's nothing to find. Don't don't feel that you have to find something and maybe I should know something. And if you are happy and at ease in your life and you appreciate and you love your life and you feel comfortable exploring yourself, knowing yourself, learning, then, then do that because you are already living from your infinite nature, living from intuition, not being blocked by mind. So you don't need this. And, and if you if you are if you are looking for a more fulfilled human experience, then then what is offered here may be good signposts for you. And if they're not, it's totally fine as well. Yeah, so I guess I needed to rant a little bit about uh, make this your own. No one will give it to you. I cannot, I cannot give it to you. I cannot give it. I can offer my experience that points to that. I, I can tell you that it's already your birthright. It's everyone's. I can tell you that it's it's available right now to not seek for anything. But if there is a seeking energy, then allow feeling, allow feeling. If, if there is sadness, if there is anger, it's as if by losing the capacity to project your pain outside of yourself, it kind of, it kind of has, has to be met because there is no more possibility to, to stay in victim consciousness. And, and it's not easy. But there is immense growth in it. And every time you feel authentically more and more and you allow yourself to feel, you are more and more free. You are closer and closer and closer to being able to stay home in yourself, in being, effortless being. And life brings you more, more relationship more opportunity more inspiration more creativity it's it's an allowing you start to be able to allow yourself to have an easy and harmonious life you stop sabotaging your life all right Anyway, so that's that's what I had to share today. I wish you the best. Thank you for listening.